Hello, everybody, and we are back. I am joined again by the wonderful Weave, and we're going to be spectating Draft Journey and Quack. Yeah, this is an exciting one because now we are, are starting, uh, we're no longer in a set map list, now it's pick counter pick. Which makes things more interesting because there's an additional level of strategy in it. We are going to be starting off on Inkblot Zones, though, and I was wondering if you have any uh, in, uh, interesting opinions on this map. I mean, it's not the best, it's not the worst. I mean, this one really comes down to who can cap zone first and start taking the picks and take their plat, you know? Pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah, it's a standard zones map for, um, I know a lot of players don't like it because of uh, mid being a little bit awkward to fight in and as well as there's only one route up to progress through. It's not as easy to progress as some of the other maps where there's a block on the right side of plat, but it is still a pretty good one. And definitely a solid start for the set. Yeah, this and one... Pretty... <laughs> oh, go on, I'm sorry. We're just going right on into it, I was about to say. Let's see what both teams bring here. We do see a ball point, which is weird because that's the first ball point I've seen in this tournament. I do want to oh, shout out Peachy on the side of Quack. You know, I got I gotta respect the twin. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And um, we are going to get into it. It's going to be Charger v. Ballpoint action here. Uh, Charger, you know, being always a force in the meta, you feel like, but uh, Ballpoint being right, right now the prominent pick. And as we do see, we do see the power of that Ballpoint as they are going to be immediately able to move forward. Crab Tank pushing up and already you have a machine striking under Plat. Two members down on the side of Quack, and they are going to be forced to rebound. Yeah, Draft Journey here taking a really solid lead starting out. I mean, that Crab was really well placed. And they still have three specials online to continue this onslaught. For sure, for sure. But Quack has their specials of their own. All of them are going out right now to try to save this push. Um, we have uh, one last... We have Crab Tank going out, or potentially going out from that Duluth, who is going to be going in trying to take a fight, uh, assisted by that Charger over here on the left. And all of the members are back in mid. They are neutralizing the zone right now. And it's just going to be up to whether or not they win this team fight for if they're going to be able to apply a nice penalty to draft journey. Which two of the members are down, they are starting to get, and there it is. The penalty is applied, and the push begins from Quack. I think I forgot to ask this earlier. Uh, what are your thoughts on each of these teams' weapon comps? I already mentioned the ballpoint, and I'm interested to see, like, the slosher and the duelies and the e-leader. Some weapons that are, we really don't see all that often. The duelies being a little more prevalent now that Splash is, like, slightly, slightly worse. Right now we see all four specials on board from Quack, all that rainbow up there on the top screen, and all of those are going to be going into the rebound right as we have only a few seconds left before the um, the lead swaps, and we do see it swap here, and that's going to be three members down. Kino, the only one left in mid, also gets taken out. That is a delayed wipe, and they have very, very little time for Draft Journey to get back in before this game is over in about 10 or so seconds. Yeah, Draft Journey had a really good start. But Quack's able to respond and overcome what Draft Journey brings, bringing out. Yeah. Five seconds left on the board. There's very, very little time left, but the zone is neutral, and the zone gets recapped. Massive penalty over there on the side of Quack, and now two members are down on both sides. This duel is going to be, uh, you know, kind of taking uh, on both the ball point and the mach uh, machine at the same time, and going to get taken out on their own. And yep. stopping on the onslaught a little bit in, but they're going to be poked by the machine. And now the machine also has the Booyah Bomb, uh, a lot of specials, and uh, I'm sure more to come that are going to be able to hopefully get Draft Journey to the point where they're going to be starting to think about getting back on their own. Nope, their penalty is almost over, but Quack has specials on board right now. Yeah, that was very well played on the side of Draft Journey. They didn't stress, and they took zone right when they needed it, and it was able to let them stand the game just a little bit longer. My internet cut out for a second. I apologize, but it looks, looks like Quack retake the zone. Am I correct? Yeah, they were able to retake. Um, they're starting to chip down their penalty a little bit, but we do see that draft journey it has taken all the way down to 26 as a 45 point penalty. So it's still anybody's game at this point. However, the leader is moving up. It's going to make it harder and harder for them to move out. All the specials are online from the side of the draft journey, though, or at least close to. Crab Tank is going to be coming out, but not quite able, able to get the pick on the leader, which is absolutely huge, and chasing after the next, not quite able to make it before they get picked off themselves, but there are, once again, 
only a few seconds left before the game goes to Quack, and there it is. Beautiful KO with a lot of back and forth starting off this set. Yeah, Quack was able to come back after a bit of a rough start and just proceed to wall out, you know, the rest of the game. Even though they lost the zone just for a little bit of time, they clutched up very nicely. For, 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 uh, uh, for <laughs> sure, for sure is what I meant to say before my tongue slipped out from under me. Which is doing an impressive amount of time today, which is very unfortunate. However, um, and now it's time for Draft Journey, who did put up a really strong showing game one to start thinking about what they wanted to start thinking about for counter picks here. It looks like um, zones may not be the greatest option for them, which they could, of, of course, go to, but uh, what else could we see here, you think? I'm hoping to see a bit of our controller Rainmaker action. I don't think they're going to pick Clams. Clams is a little too risky. But Rainmaker and Tower are pretty safe picks, especially considering their weapon comps. They are running the on on the server is a more aggressive comp here. Opting to not run that really heavy backline, that anchor from that Elyr, but instead opting to run that ball point, which is has the jet for pushing in. It's a much more aggressive weapon in general, can take really close-up fights pretty well on its own. And additionally, they it just overall um tend to have a more aggressive play style. However, the Elyr really did hold them back. So ideally, they're going to be trying to choose a map mode here where that leader is not going to do as well because that really is the make or break for them, it seems. Oh, yeah, for sure. So anything with a lot of sightline issues for the leader could be huge. Definitely not something like Brian Water, so definitely not something like Museum could be pretty dangerous for them. There's a lot of choices that they can make. I'm kind of thinking. Hmm. Barnacle and Dime may actually be pretty solid. Like, Leader does have a perch, but it's pretty easily overtaken when played smart. So I, I could see Barnacle and Dime come about. For sure. Um, but we are... Actually, this is probably a really, really good one for them. We do see uh -oh. Rainmaker Undertow, which is going to be... Yeah, the Leader still has some good positions, but... It's definitely not one that it thrives in nearly as much. It can see down both sides, but also just a very interesting one. This is I one of my personal least favorite ones to play, but watching this one is going to be a blast. I could see the E-Leader swap onto kind of a more standard Seco or Vanilla Charger, just because of the faster play style and the better special for this map specifically. Especially with, with, with that yeah. new VAC buff. That guy could be potentially huge for not only popping Rainmaker, but some pretty solid defense options, too. That has been something I've seen, been seeing a little bit more often, but yeah, people are kind of scared to experiment with it, which is, of course, understandable when you're in a tournament setting. However, if you're going to mirror it out, you know, this is not a terrible one to bring it out to. And um, definitely excited to see what these guys bring out. Of course, with the leader is always going to have an advantage because it just it has so much long range. It excels like nothing else at just providing pressure very consistently where the the short range chargers well do it. They do it well is not nearly as well. Yeah. Let's see what these teams are going to bring out. We see um I believe Quack here yeah both bringing out the ball points. So swapping off of chargers all together, which is ball point and slushers. Both of these comps are Really similar. The only thing we see differently is the T Tech and the Duelies here. Yeah, so opting for a crowd versus some tri or versus um, some tri strikes. Yeah, that's like going to be an interesting trade off. Already though, Quack has a member being picked off. The tri strikes are going out and picks are cascading around. Looks like this counter pick may have been a really good drop because they have two down in this first little bit and already have a pretty major advantage as long as they can just keep it going. Uh, or already though, the shot over here with the Zuka, mm. which is going to maybe stop the Rainmaker, gets taken out by the Zuka of Draft Journey's own. And so now they just have to be uh, do a really good job of kind of being patient here, but also being explosive enough to get through this here. Uh, the duelies dodge in and dive and get their crab off and pick off their rainmaker, stopping their push just for just for right now. Yeah, that's a potentially huge like you know position right there. They were able to stop them from getting that checkpoint, and like once that checkpoint over there on the right is taken, it's a pretty big snowball. But with Quack able to kind of hold it off, that's potentially huge. Definitely. Um, now this, this uh, Rainmaker is here stuck in the corner, but they are able to get, I believe, one or two picks off. 
Now there's three down, there's a complete wipe onto Giraffe Journey, and so Quack quickly taking that pretty scary situation and turning it on its heels is now looking like they're going to be able to get that first checkpoint off, the first one to do so, and uh, it looks like, uh, you know, Giraffe Journey is kind of going to be left reeling as the pressure is not being let up here. Zuka going out, Trishax going out, and it looks like they're opting instead to just back up a little bit and wait it out until they have a chance to push in a little bit more securely, but one of the members does run into the bomb. But they are just keeping on getting points, that's all the way down to 19. And even though two of them are down, they were able to get that push pretty, pretty far. And so that makes it ever more awkward for Draft Journey. Even, like, they still have member uh, players on the enemy team to flush out here. They all have to get it all the way down to 20 now to secure a victory. Yeah, that push right there was really huge. Not only did they break that checkpoint, but pushing it to 19 over that uninkable section is very nice. That can let them pretty much kind of stall out or push a, um potential knockout here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just keeping up the pressure is the name of the game here, but it's far from over. Rainmaker is, you know, it's known as the most volatile game in this uh, mode in this game for a reason. Mm -hmm. And we can definitely see something like the lead swip here, but Quack is doing a fantastic job on defense, uh, doing good job at camping those jumps as well. Making sure that they aren't able to even get past that elbow, not able to get to even to this like that, they are able to get that push on. They are continuing here, they are keeping up the pressure, but it uh, looks like two down here, they may be able to get the checkpoint, and they do. Now this could also be another snowball effect from the side of the draft journey. I mean, they got that checkpoint pop, all they could do is probably take one or two picks and start panning up, and that could spell another lead swap. Yeah, for sure. sure. Um, they do have their jetpack ready, which is going to be huge in picking off, trying to pick off that other ball point. They also can kind of try to shred that crab. The crab for the jet uh, rivalry is real, and it looks like the crab in that distance one. But they are going to be able to start pushing up, getting a few more points in. But unfortunately, that is another full wipeout here. They are going to have to start from ground zero here and trying to get another push going. Yeah, that was a little unfortunate for the side of draft journey. I mean, it was two down on both sides when they have taken that fight, but Quack was able just to kind of overpower them and take that wipeout which lets them take mid completely to themselves. Fire tricks, though, are going to stall them down just a little bit, buying them time to move in a little bit more. However, the T-Deck does get picked off, and the ball point as well gets picked off by the Rainmaker. Looks like we're going to be able to slide in over here on the left side like they were before, and looks like they're just going to try to go for more points. More pressure, more points, and more pressure is how they're playing this here. Kino gets picked off, two down, members down on the side of Quack, and looks like they did a pretty good job. The Zuka ends up falling into the water, <laughs> unfortunately yeah, for them. That's just a bit unfortunate. But I mean, they were able to take the Rainmaker from their side and put it out relatively on the side of Draft Journey, which just kind of tells them, hey, you're not able to take our base, we're not going to let you do it. Um, that Rainmaker is yours to have, but it'll stay on your side. Oh, uh, yeah. And Quack, once again, has a numbers advantage here and also has a special advantage. Uh, we only have 30 or so seconds left in this match before things start to get really hairy. For Giraffe Journey, you never want to be in that overtime push because one single mistake can end the game. They want to be able to get something going on before here, but they have to set themselves up for it. And right now they do have two specials. They are starting to push up just a little bit. They are starting to get the crucial picks in here, but the tri slasher, or the normal slasher, gets taken out before they have the chance. And now they're going to be starting to think about picking it up and just trying to advance as much as they can before overtime ends. Uh, looks like the ball point is going to be the one picking that up. Yeah, Draft Journey doesn't need to get stressed here. They need to kind of like keep the mental game going and really clutch up because remember, this is single elimination. So if they lose this Rainmaker here, as we do see, this could spell the victory for Quack, knocking Draft Journey out. And that's going to be that uh, very back and forth game where we did see Quack take a major advantage. Very similar in a lot of ways to the first game where Draft Journey put up a fantastic fight, but Quack was just able to respond with even more um, in their favor. And so that is going to be them uh, buying their tickets, progressing their way on further and further, and finding their way for that, you know, fought in finals. That, that was a very impressive set on the side of Quack. We saw them able just to keep the heat up they took fights that they knew they could win and they never really went in alone unless it was absolutely necessary so very good team play on this side of quack and props to draft journey too they are a really strong team just unfortunately got overpowered you know what i mean yeah i do and you know what you mean and uh, in the rest of this it looks like one hit wonders and two ojisha are still taking it off are you know still fighting it off However, uh, Papega Fan Club is uh, took it 2-0 over She's in a Single Day, and Rat took it 2-0 over Baby Girls. 
Rat was one of the teams I wanted people to look out for. I mean, they're the only team in this tournament so far to not drop a game. And that continues into bracket. They went 2-0. and oh, Haven't dropped a single game or so. Yeah, for sure. And I'm expecting them to keep on that energy. However, that next match for them is going to be Quack versus Rat, which is going to be really, really interesting because Quack has been showing a lot of their good side here. So as we continue on, we're going to see how that match pans out. But first, we're going to take a short break. We'll get ready for everyone else to go. Um, waiting for everyone else to, you know, get games all finished before we progress on. Yep, we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> 